Welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Dr. Angelica Maria Koch with the educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. Welcome to the season of allergies. Well, here at my home in New Mexico, a lot of patients talking already about their seasonal allergies. So I thought this is a perfect time to make this video and share with you the top natural remedies and the most effective protocols, how to beat your sneezing attacks, your itchy eyes and runny nose. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and family and have a look at my website medicanova.net at the online academy where you will find comprehensive home study online courses in first aid homeopathy, um, quantum healing and soon wellness coaching. And if you're interested in a personal health consultation, either for yourself or your children, contact me at health at medicanova.net. So let's first have a look at how an allergies can affect your body and your overall health. Well, an allergy starts with the immune system sort of mistaking a normally harmless substance for a dangerous invader. So your itchy eye has all to do with a weakened immune system. The immune system then produces antibodies, they are called immunoglobin IgE antibodies, you maybe have heard about that, that are always on the alert for your particular allergen. A person with allergies usually displays a very high number of these antibodies, in fact too much of them. And during this process, innocent mast cells get injured during the warring off of these IgE antibodies and the allergic substances. But what is a mast cell? Well, it belongs to the immune system and each mast cell is filled, we call it the basophil granule, um, found in numbers of your connective tissues, such as your flesh. So it releases histamine and other substances during the inflammatory and allergic reaction. That's why you go to the pharmacy and get antihistamine medication. So when this mast cell is injured, it releases a variety of chemicals into the tissues and your blood. And one of them is histamine. So your allergy is actually a reaction of released chemicals. But what are your normal symptoms or the common symptoms? Usually sneezing, you know, runny nose, nasal congestion, itching of the nose, post-nasal trip, mucus running down the back of your throat. Some have itchy and watery and swollen eyes, of course, dark circles under the eyes. The others have a scratchy sore throat or a sinus infection or even tickling or itching in the ears which can lead to a middle ear infection. And don't forget the mood swings and the lack of concentration and focus and inability to make decisions and just feeling miserable, right? Lack of sleep maybe and some are really, you know, affected with the blood uh, pressure or even go to asthma and the skin reactions. So there's a whole kaleidoscope of symptoms which can be caused by seasonal allergies. Now pollens that are spread by the wind are usually the main cause of seasonal allergies whereas pollen that rely on insects like the honeybee and are carried from plants to plants are not so much involved often. Pollen can travel long distances and the levels in the air can vary from day to day, even the different regions of the city. Now levels of pollen tend to be highest in the early morning to mid-morning. So your spring allergies are therefore a result of the tree pollen, whereas the um, summer allergies are more related to grass pollen and flower pollens and the wheat allergies are more related to them late summer to um, fall. So your spring allergies can start in January and up to April. Right now in New Mexico we have the juniper plowing so everyone is sneezing because the juniper is pollinating. You can have an allergy test or blood test called RAST is usually uh, applied to determine if you actually have a seasonal allergies or which pollen you are allergic to. 
And then of course you go to your pharmacy and get your Claritin, your Sirtic, your Benadryl and your Allegra and to stop controlling these sneezing attacks. But that's really what it does. It just controls your attacks, but it doesn't cure it. And that's why I made this video to educate you what's the real cause of it and how to treat that in a much more effective way and lasting way as well. So let's talk about the real cause of your allergies and how to treat them effectively. Now you do understand a little bit that your allergies are not only caused by the high pollen count or environmental triggers, but has a lot to do with your overreactive immune system. And there's one organ which is really important. Your allergies are mainly caused by your impaired liver and especially the left liver lobe. Your depleted adrenals, which comes from fast-paced life, you know, maybe tend to worry or have an anxiety or worry about the state of the world right now, um, impoverished diet, depleted digestive enzymes, and a little bit a genetic factor, and you are set for your allergies. Your liver's function are all about assimilation and processing nutrients, construction of biochemical complexes for the body's use, and the detoxification of metabolic waste products. So as I keep talking to you in this video, my body produces energy to do so. And therefore, there are also waste products happening, which the liver has to take care of. It provides primary support to the endocrine glands, which are your thyroid, your adrenals, your ovaries, your testes, your pancreas, all glands which produce hormones, which are very important as they regulate your immune system. Now the liver recycles these hormones, relieving much overworked adrenals and thyroid glands and regarding the allergic reactions, the liver helps control the histamine reaction, again, which is very important with your allergies. Now, for example, I want to explain that to you. The human immune system reads any protein which comes into your body as an important property in any food. That can be from your fruit, vegetable, meat, or anything um, which comes into your body, and therefore it determines whether the protein is beneficial or a self or a threatening non-self to the body. So what does that mean? It means your liver makes the decision if this incoming protein, and here it comes, it can be your allergen, it can be your bacteria, virus, parasite, your chewing gum, your strawberry cheesecake, you know, whatever, because they're all essentially proteins if it's beneficial for the body or not. And how it does it, it sort of gives each protein a code, like an identity, a name, a passport, a function within the body or not. And this humanizing process, it's called, has a name for it, is totally dependent on the liver's own capacity to process incoming proteins. So this check occurs, as I said, because it can be anything. A protein is a building block for our body, but it can be a virus, can be a bacteria, a parasite, anything. And the liver needs to decide, no, I don't want you in my body, but oh yeah, I like you. And I give you now the coding uh, for the correct function. Do you understand what I'm saying here? You have to take care of your liver if you want to get rid of your seasonal allergy. So if the proteins are not given a code or identity, the immune system will relate to these proteins as invaders and in foreign particles. It just said, I don't recognize you in my body and therefore I'm going to attack you. And these attacks of these non-processed proteins is your allergic reaction. In fact, these unprocessed proteins are then lodging in your lymph system and that is, can be one cause why you can't sleep in the night, right? Because they're just moving around and are not processed and released. So for our survival, the immune system is always quickly alerted to foreign uh, proteins. 
So the problems with many people's allergies is their body's excessive reaction to proteins in the bloodstream, which have not been or cannot be at this point humanized. And it is the left liver which is responsible here for the environmental and food allergies. As already mentioned, if your adrenal glands are depleted of vital energy and because of stress and fast-paced life or you can't sleep or you worry a lot, coupled with a deficiency of digestive enzymes, you're probably more prone to allergies. So people with a very toxic left liver lobe, they're very sensitive to everything outside, you know, what nature provides, you know, as well as food allergies. They have to take care of your liver, their liver. But there's a little bit more here. Allergies also have a lot to do with an interrupted cell communication, meaning the cells stop talking with each other. And that has a lot to do with our inflammatory uh, conditions within our body today, as well as allergies. So the real culprit, the real causes of your seasonal allergies is based on a lack of proper cellular communication, even misinterpretation, maybe you know the wrong alphabet is used here, or the incoming information is, is garbled, right? The cells cannot understand anymore what's, what's, what is expressed here. We talked about the weak liver, a weak left liver lobe. You want to have an exhausted um, adrenal gland here, as well as a deficiency of digestive enzymes. So what can you do? Well, to start with, you want to take care of your liver and that can be done with natural supplements, either Amazonian Chinese and Western herbs, even Ayurvedic herbs, you know, which take care of your liver as well, in this case, the stomach and the colon. Remember in previous videos, I mentioned that the liver and the colon and the stomach are your healing triad. So you just don't want to focus on one because they all work and interlink with each other. If you want to really go for it, you can contact me at health at medicanova.net. I fantastic, affordable and effective protocols to take care of your liver. I work with really great supplements in my practice. I also suggest taking throughout the seasonal, um, you know, throughout the whole season, doesn't matter if it's a spring or fall, quercetin. Quercetin is a flavonoid which gives, you know, the berries or the onions the color. It's a pigment. And you want to have a thousand milligrams daily coupled with vitamin C. And here I would say a thousand milligrams too. You maybe want to do it twice a day here with vitamin C. I further suggest, because we talk about the immune system, to bring in a lot of spirulina, like green superfood. I also would say probiotics. Uh, 50 billion units, you maybe have to take two to three capsules a day to meet that requirement. Vitamin A, we want to have 2,000 milligrams here and definitely and for sure zinc, 30 milligrams a day. Your immune system is really the main part here. I mentioned digestive enzymes, but also systemic enzymes. And here you want to bring in bromelain, which comes from the pineapple. Here again, 1,000 milligrams. And if you want to choose a Western herbs, you maybe think about the stinging nettle which really helps with your allergies because it contains antihistamine and anti-inflammatory properties. But all that doesn't make sense if you don't care or if you, or, you know, just be a laxy daisy with your nutrition. So stay away from wheat or from grains and excess sugar and too much dairy, of course, because it produces a lot of mucus. With all that, I want to give you uh, another option, which are homeopathic remedies. And in this case, I want to focus on first aid homeopathic remedies, which you can get hold of in your local health food store. So this is nothing too complicated. With this combination, you have a fantastic protocol which works. 
The key here is that I'm going to share remedies with you now and you will look out for your individual expression of your seasonal allergies because each one is unique. And then you match it with the keynotes of the remedies I'm sharing with you plus the supplements and you're good to go. It's going to work. The first remedy I will share with you is called Allium Sepa. And the potency which we're looking for is 30. In the health food store you get a 6 or 30. That's usually the over-the-counter, you know, legally provided potencies. Now, in an acute situation you want to take one tablet three times a day and then taper it down to maybe one tablet for the next 10 days. If you have an improvement setting in maybe after five days, then stop taking the remedies and only repeat them when indicated. And if you're in doubt, contact me at health at mediconova.net. I'm happy to help you. Back to our Allium Sepa. Well, it's a remedy made from red onion. And just imagine you are in your kitchen and you're cutting and slicing your onion. Now, what's about to happen? Well, your eyes start to water, your nose starts to water, maybe start rubbing your eyes. That's a typical Allium Sepa hay fever experience. Allium Sepa is one of the top remedies for allergic rhinitis and it is prescribed when there's a watery discharge from the eyes along with the runny nose. And here comes the keynote. That's what I want you to remember. The watery uh, discharge from the nose is very acrid and it makes your skin under your nose very sore, whereas the discharge from the eyes is bland. It isn't so burning so much and it doesn't make the eyes sort of red or, uh, you know, it's like the skin around the eyes is affected. Of course, there may be burning, but it's mainly what's coming out of your nose, which really is the acrid part here. So remember that. The total opposite, that's why homeopathy is sometimes confusing for some, is the remedy Euphrasia 30. Again, we only talk about the eyes here. Everything centers around the eyes and there's a profuse now acrid discharge coming from the eyes but a blunt discharge out of your nose. So the eyes feel very affected. There's burning, the skin around the eyes is really red and you feel like it's itching and uh, often it's worse in the early morning. There can be respiratory problems involved like uh, a cough as well. So in Allium Sepa, you know the eyes are affected but what's come and there's a lot of profuse discharge, like as if you're cutting an onion, but the acridness is coming out of the nose, whereas in Euphrasia, it's the reverse. Another remedy which you want to think about is called Asenicum Album 30. And here now we talk about the nose mainly. Of course, the eyes are puffy and swollen as well, but it's really here the nose which is affected. Again, we have a lot of water coming out of here and it's a thin watery nasal discharge, again, which makes the skin under your nose very raw. And now there's a lot of sneezing involved without relief. There can be cold sores in the nose too. It's quite common. The discharge which comes out of your nose definitely burns, has a bite to it, right? And the edges of the eyelids uh, feel they're sort of painful on motion and give you a sensation if, if they're dry and you want to rub your eyeball. Definitely there is a burning sensation involved and everything is swollen and puffy. There can be also intense photophobia, so you're sensitive to sunlight. Um, these people definitely are more prone to anxiety and feeling restless. They really worry a lot, particularly about their allergies. Now, now we're going to focus, you know, focus more on the sneezing part, right? So we started with a Senecum album sneezing, but now we crank it up a little bit. And the next remedy is called Natio Moriaticum Thirdio or Nat Mure. And here, it's really a fantastic remedy when you have a lot of sneezing, which starts with the sneezing only, right? It's like that's the first trigger here. 
there's intense dryness of the mouth and the mucous membrane. There may be a, a discharge coming out of the nose which stops for a while and then starts fluent, you know, runs again out of your nose and it stops up again. Definitely loss of smell and taste. That's a fantastic remedy for that. And the discharge which comes out of your nose is thin and watery but also has this consistency or the color as the weight of an egg. Right? It's not just watery and clear. There's a little whitish color involved. So look out for that. Especially for spring seasonal allergies, I always recommend the remedy Sabadilla. And here the sneezing is just, you know, to the very top. It's almost become spasmodic. Like people sneeze and they can't stop and they feel so miserable. There is also a constant running discharge from the nose. But as I said, it's at a, not your mere sort of sneezing too, but Sabadilla is at really the Roy's Roy of the sneezing attacks. It's just really it just keeps going. There can be severe frontal head pains, redness and watering of the eyes, of course. And this remedy also has a sore throat involved, particularly on the left side. Lots of tough mucus coming out. Symptoms are usually, funny enough, better from hot food or hot drinks and worse for any cold drinks or food. I want to give you two remedies which are very specific for the symptom when you have itchiness on the roof of your mouth. It's called the palate. Um, some people or a group of people out there really have this specific symptom. And there's a remedy called Arundo 30. Really fantastic. It's a, you maybe have to order that online. I don't think they sell that um, over the counter. But here the itchy, uh, the itchiness is very much related to the roof of the mouth and the nose. So you constantly have an itchy nose. Think about that. If you have only the itchy roof of the uh, mouth, uh, you know, which is called the palate, and it itches towards the ears, then think about the remedy Wyethia 30. It's really specifically indicated here, really works well. It often comes at the beginning of the season, this remedy. Now, I know we talk about spraying and we talk about the pollen of the trees, but I just throw in another remedy in case it's the flower, right, in your case. So it's called Sanguinara canadensis um, 30. This is specifically indicated for smelling of flowers or even, you know, the fragrance of the flowers, which can cause an allergic reaction. So think about that. Now people th say, is there prevention in homeopathy? You know, can I take something so I don't even get it? Yes, there is, but he take, you know, maybe you book an appointment with a practitioner because it goes a little bit deeper, but I want to give you a hint here. Ideally, in homeopathy, you um, find out what's your key symptom and then prescribe the indicated remedy. But you can do something. Take the remedy Natio Moriaticum, Natio Mio 30, and the remedy Naphtaline 30, alternately switching it off each week. So you have Natio Mio 30 one week, the next week you take Naphtaline 30 and switch back again throughout the season. That may be a little underlying help as well, plus the quercetin, plus the vitamin C, and so on, and your sink. Now, naphtaline 30 is almost specific uh, as a preventative and curative in hay fever seasonal allergies. There's this excoriating discharge, which is really acrid, from the eyes and the nose, and the lids are, of course, swollen as well. It can have a tendency to asthma. I think that's all what I want to say today. I gave you a big package, a very effective package, and get your natural supplements and the indicated homeopathic remedies, but the ones which will fit your seasonal allergy symptoms only, and then you're good to go. If you need more help, of course, contact me at health at medicanova.net. There's no need to suffer throughout this 
upcoming glorious spring season and here in the northern hemisphere so go and try it out i know you can do it it will work so till next time much love and you don't have to sneeze anymore what a relief huh take care Thank you.